Great Britain is in no short supply of myths and legends. Few of these tales, however, can match the renown of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, and the mystery that surrounds his story, including that of his birthplace. Tintagel. Nowadays, the quiet village is popular with tourists visiting the rural north coast of Cornwall in southwest England. Over a thousand years ago, it was an important exporting hub for a rare commodity Cornish tin. But the legacy of Tintagel concerns much more than just tin mining. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Morby photographic video. My name is Angus Morby and I'm a landscape photographer. Today I am visiting Tintagel Castle in North Cornwall and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know so that you can visit yourself. At the end of this video I'm going to show you my shots, the type of photos that are on offer here at Tintagel. First things first, let me tell you how to get to Tintagel. The village, as mentioned, is situated in a rural area over an hour's drive from the nearest city. For that reason, you'll probably need the use of a car to get here. There are no trains, although the area is served by buses, including the number 95 between Bude and Truro. The latter is on the Cornish mainline, although it would still be uh, quite a long bus ride from there. If you were driving and using Google Maps, Tintagel or Tintagel Castle will get you to where you need to be. If you have a sat-nav that requires a postcode, use Papa Lima 34 Delta Delta to get to the Castle car park. If you are walking the southwest coastal path, you will reach Tintagel at sections 12 and 13 between Crackington Haven and Port Isaac. The village can be found on OS Explorer Map 111. The King Arthur tales as we know them today were compiled by a man named Geoffrey of Monmouth, who in 1136 published his book Historia Regum Britanniae the kings and queens of Britain. He wrote extensively of Arthur, Merlin, and the Knights of the Round Table, and he named Tintagel as Arthur's birthplace. A few things worth knowing if you visit Tintagel. When you arrive, you'll find a number of pay and display car parks available in the village, providing enough parking for a small city, which should indicate to you how busy Tintagel gets during peak season. The castle itself is a short walk down to the coast and is clearly signposted. Go past the castle shop and down the hill towards the entrance. If you walk really, really fast, it will look like this. At the time of filming, there is a one-way system in place and pre-booking is required as a result of COVID, so check that before you travel. After paying at the English Heritage booth, avoid any rogue prams guarding the gatehouse and you can then enter the castle and cross to the island. I visited out of hours to film as there are too many people during the day and so the island was closed, but that's something that you can see for yourself if you visit. Below the castle there is a picnic area outside the beach cafe along with an exhibition and other facilities. See the English Heritage website for full details. The 
The settlement at Tintagel is connected to various other royalty and numerous intriguing histories. But the legend of King Arthur is the most well known, thanks to Historia Regum Britanniae. The work was regarded as fact by many for hundreds of years, but later historians began to identify inconsistencies in Geoffrey's version of events, not to mention a lack of known credible sources. It's now widely considered that Geoffrey of Monmouth had simply invented much of what he'd written, but separating fact from fiction is an impossible task nearly 1500 years after the deeds of Arthur are supposed to have taken place. Had he merely altered a few details or imagined much of it from scratch? Historia Regum Britanniae was not the first set of writings to mention Arthur, but the tales originate from a time known as the Dark Ages. Given that name, as few written records survive from that era. We do know that the castle as it stands today was constructed in the 1100s on the site of the original Tintagel settlement. On the island are the remains of houses that were built between the 5th and 7th centuries AD, the supposed time of Arthur. The castle is now in the hands of English heritage who have recently added the impressive bridge to aid access and avoid some very steep steps. Just one thing to mention here is that this video is not sponsored by English Heritage. I am not affiliated with them in any way, but I am more than happy to give them a big shout out because first of all, they are a charity. And secondly, they do incredible work in maintaining old buildings in England, uh, particularly castles and monasteries and, and things like that. And obviously these are in incredibly difficult and incredibly expensive to maintain and keep them safe and keep them open to the public. Uh, beyond that, obviously all uh, English Heritage, National Trust and, and many charities like that are struggling after the lost earnings last year in, in uh, last year and this year in the, in the year of Covid. So I'm more than happy to give them a shout out. Yes, I do think the entry price into Tintagel is a little bit on the pricey side, but I think it's worth it for the location. It's an absolutely stunning location with a great history behind it. Tintagel Castle is one of the jewels in the crown of English Heritage's portfolio, if you like. Your money will go towards the upkeep of stunning historical buildings here and elsewhere. Uh, nobody's making a profit from it. One thing to mention is that if you are a member, you can enter for free. I think I pay some six pounds a month something like that to be a member of English Heritage so it is well worth it I would recommend it I have popped a link in the description below if you would like to become a member of English Heritage Arthurian legend contains a multitude of famous names, as celebrated as that of the king himself. At Tintagel, on the beach below the castle, you'll find Merlin's cave. Hopefully you can see behind me, in the base of the island lies Merlin's cave. Now, Merlin's cave is quite a big cave and it extends through to the other side to the sea on the other side of the island but sadly it does fill up at fill up with water at high tide and for obvious reasons I have not got any footage of it today. I have been here on other occasions when the tide has been out and not got footage suitable for this video so apologies for that but all the more reason for you to come and visit yourself. If Tintagel Castle looks like the type of place you'd like to visit and you're looking to travel in the UK, you're looking for ideas for holidays, road trips, days out, if you're a photographer, a filmmaker, an Instagrammer looking for places to shoot, hit that subscribe button because I have so many more places just like this to share with you.
Whatever your reason for visiting Tintagel, you'll get the chance to judge Geoffrey of Monmouth's claims for yourself. Many modern historians believe that Geoffrey named Tintagel as Arthur's birthplace simply because it was an important place at that time as a result of the area's tin mining wealth. Some things, however, are more complex than they appear at first glance. In the book's dedication, Geoffrey declared that it was based on source materials given to him by Walter, Archdeacon of Oxford, which is a claim he could not have made lightly. The Archdeacon was an important man and also an acquaintance of Geoffrey's. Though various earlier works have been identified as the possible source or sources for Historia Regum Britanniae, the truth behind the writings is ultimately now lost in history. And that leaves us where we started, with a mystery surrounding the birthplace of a king, part of a folklore famous right around the world. But one burning question remains above all others. So was King Arthur born in Tintagel? Well, in truth, nobody knows for certain, and we probably never will. But it would be nice to think so. I would love it if it was true. That is all from me, folks. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Any questions, please stick them in the comments below. I will see you on the next adventure. Until then, here are my shots of Tintagel.